but we really are going to start now. So welcome everybody to this uh, Accountex seminar. My name is Rob Lambden. Um, I'm talking today about the cloud conundrum. Uh, I have been in the IT industry for more years than I care to admit, I guess. Um, and I remember it used to be common practice for people to talk about vaporware. So you used to have hardware and software and then vaporware, which is when people were selling things they didn't really have. And one of the things that we found over the years is sometimes people's experience of cloud uh, is it's a bit like vaporware. It's not quite what they've expected. So what we're doing in today's talk is we're just examining some of the reasons for why that is. So uh, hopefully that will be to help you avoid some of those pitfalls going forward. I'm hoping to keep this to 20 minutes or so, so there's plenty of time. If people have got questions, I'm very happy to take questions either during the talk or at the end. Okay, I need to stay close to the microphone for the sound level, so um, if I wander off, uh, just give me a shout and I'll come back so you can hear what I'm saying. Okay, so we're going to start off with a little bit of a story uh, about this lady here. Let's call her Sophie. It's as good a name as any, I guess. And Sophie is uh, someone who wants to use the cloud. She's been told... Oh, that was the wrong mouse button, sorry. Start again. She's been told that the cloud um, is a very neat way to wrap up a whole range of her issues, both in terms of running her systems and access to software. Uh, it sounds for her ideal. She's got limited uh, computer experience, limited in-house resources. So she wants to use the cloud, but actually what she ends up with, it doesn't really seem particularly joined together. She's got a, she's got a, a cloud-based email service, um, she's got a, a cloud-based contact management system. They don't seem to talk to each other properly. So uh, she goes again to relook at what she needs. And it seems that what she's after, what people are telling her she ought to be able to get, seems far away and out of reach. Uh, she speaks to some of her friends. They've had an experience of the bottom falling out of their cloud when their cloud provider had a service disruption. So this is a, a, a rain cloud emptying. And she's also told by someone that what she needs is more cloud. The reason she's got all these problems with things not working together is because she hasn't properly committed to the cloud. If she properly committed to the cloud, everything would be resolved. Other people are telling her Actually, you need to be selective. Not all applications are suitable for use in the cloud. You need to choose what you're doing and be careful about the decisions you're making. So obviously, it just makes her feel blue. She can't get her head round why something that is supposed to be a simple way to deliver benefits to her ends up being complicated for her to consume. It's giving her a serious headache and she's worried that it might lead to a, a, a real breakdown in her work enjoyment. So what I've done there is I've shown you a whole load of pictures of different types of cloud and weaved together a bit of a story about some of the experiences that we found actually are, are more common than cloud providers like myself um, actually think about. And the thing is, all of those pictures that we saw are all clouds, but they're all very different. We had wispy clouds, we had cumulus clouds, we had rain clouds, we had storm clouds. Um, that last one, I think, is a, 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 a tornado for me in America. So. They're all different. And one of the problems people have is they're looking at different types of services. They're all being told it's cloud, but they're all different. And they want to know 
isn't there a definition of what cloud is? And this is part of the this is part of the problem that people have. So here is the definition according to NIST. So NIST is a US government agency, National Institute for Standards in Technology. Their job is to set and define standards so that people know when you use a specific term what it means. This definition is not very long. I think this is the 15th draft of the definition. So obviously they take quite a lot of care about how they phrase it. There's specific words that come out of this. Shared, configurable, rapidly provisioned, minimal management effort, so there's a whole load of factors that go into that definition which they're saying what characterises cloud. That's not the only definition. This is what the Oxford English Dictionary says. Now, the Oxford English Dictionary is of course designed to reflect English as it is used. So according to the Oxford English Dictionary, when people say cloud computing, what do they mean? They mean the practice of using a network of remote servers hosted on the internet to store, manage and process data rather than a local server or a personal computer, which is quite radically different from what we saw before. So quite often you'll have people saying that something is cloud and somebody else telling you it isn't cloud because it's not whatever they think the cloud should be. And here we come to the first unfortunate truth. The cloud can mean almost anything your supplier intends it to mean when they tell you this is a cloud solution. It's possible to embrace a whole range of things which may well mean one thing that somebody calls cloud, somebody else would say isn't cloud, and that only leads to confusion. So I'd like to um, uh, tell you a, a, a quick anecdote about how different terms can be confusing. Um, I bought a car a little while ago and I wanted a blue car. I thought that can't be that difficult. That wasn't my only criteria for buying a car. And the um, manufacturer that I was looking at, their advertised colour um, was I think it was Cayman blue or something and it was a deep vibrant blue like the Caribbean Sea very nice so I went in in the dealership and I ordered a car in this color and they said yes yes it's coming in that color but actually it didn't come in that color it came in another color blue with a different name and they said oh well we stopped doing that one so the color blue that I wanted was like the Caribbean Sea. The one that I got was more like the sea in Skegness. It's kind of grey rather than blue. It has, I guess, got a bit of a blue tint to it. Now, how did I feel in that process? I felt let down by the manufacturer because I felt I'd been misled as to the colour of the car. Is the colour of the car not that important? Actually, to some people it is. It's a big purchase. It's a personal purchase. And quite often when people are buying a cloud system, there are assumptions made both by the person buying it and by the person selling it. Those assumptions aren't the same. It won't be the colour of your car that you've got uh, uh, confusion about. It will be the nature of the software, the benefits that you'll get within your business or your practice, the capabilities for using that. There'll be a whole range of things that could go wrong. So you're talking about cloud. What about this? There's cloud there. There's something else as well, which definitely isn't cloud. You can have a conversation with a supplier who completely omits to tell you that a large part of the system is not as you expected it to be. And in their understanding, they would be completely right to do that if from what they've understood they can meet all of your stated objectives and not deliver it. Is that important? Well it might be and it might not be but the issue is uh, uh, problems arise because there are uh, uh, there's so much opportunity for misunderstanding because these days the cloud means anything. 
So here is our second unfortunate truth. So the first one, cloud can mean just about anything you want it to. The second one is, typically when you're buying cloud, to sell you a cloud, the person you're buying that solution from does not need to be certified or approved by anyone. If you're an accountant and you're offering accountancy services, um, you will be regulated by an institute who's given you a qualification. There is an expectation of a uh, level of competency that is set because there's that uh, certification to the standard set by the institute. That doesn't exist for most technology companies. Now that doesn't mean that they can um, do things willy-nilly because obviously in uh, these days of social media it's easy to get feedback but it's entirely possible for people to operate a cloud company with no kind of certification or approval. So the third unfortunate truth, they can call anything they like cloud pretty much and get away with it. They don't need to be certified or approved. Um, when you buy a cloud solution, ultimately it's your supplier who has control. It isn't you, ultimately. Now, obviously you can regain control by having contracts that give you exit clauses and so on, but it's the supplier who holds the control. So what is the first obvious statement that we're going to make? Obvious statement number one, choose your supplier carefully. Now it's quite difficult for non-specialists to be able to understand the differences with some of the things suppliers say. So for example, there are lots of people here today who sell, who sell you stuff under the badge of cloud services. I happen to be looking at the sales literature of one of our competitors uh, who is saying in their literature, it's talking about information security. Information security, there is an international standard for it, so it's very easy to tell unlike with some other things, is somebody accredited or not? And they're making the point in their literature that some of their competitors would use data centers that aren't accredited and saying actually that's very important. And that is very important because the data center controls the power, the continuity for power and the environmental continuity for so things like air conditioning, humidity, and of course, physical security to stop people walking off with a service. Of course that is important, but that's all the data center is responsible for. The people who are processing and storaging, storing and managing your data and providing backups and all the rest of it, have a lot more access to your data than the data center do and can do a lot more damage. Surely you should deal with a supplier who is themselves accredited, and because they're accredited, it's the, they're the party you're contracting with. Now they don't say that because they're not accredited themselves. They tell you use, you should use a supplier with an accredited data centre. I won't tell you who they are, but I mean if you look at the literature from different people, you'll see lots of kind of issues like that. So things that suppliers say mean different things in different contexts. Okay, so here is obvious statement number two. You need to know why you're buying the solution and what it is you're buying. We have found a lot of people, as I said earlier, making assumptions because lots of things get called cloud. They say, oh, I was speaking to you know, my cousin, my next door neighbor, some guy I met in the pub, whoever it might be, they're using a cloud system, they say it's great. What is the cloud system? What are they using it for? And why is it great? It doesn't mean you'll get benefits just because it's the latest buzzword. Some people specifically buy cloud solutions because they think they're cheaper. And they may well be cheaper in the short run, but why are they cheaper? What is it that's enabling them to make it cheaper? So for example, if you're buying application software, you have a choice of ways of buying it, you would expect that the software vendor who's selling that to you 
would want to make equal revenue, broadly speaking, regardless of how they sell it. If they're providing you with software licensing plus a service to host that software, cheaper, why would they do that commercially? That brings us on to obvious statement number three, and this comes back to knowing your supplier. So think about what is the supplier selling and why are they selling it? Because their objectives can be very different to yours. So in our company, we are a cloud services company is what people would call us now. We're a hosting company, we're not a software vendor. Most of the services we provide, we provide general cloud services, but most of the services we provide are around specific applications where we've got expertise, but they're not our applications. Our commercial interest is in maintaining your business so that we continue to generate revenue for our services. A software vendor is interested in you continuing to use their software and not switching to somebody else's and giving them ongoing revenue, either by moving to a subscription model so they can cheap keep charging you regardless of whether or not you take upgrades or by getting you to buy upgrades periodically. That's their business model. That's how they want to do business. Does that fit with what you want to do? If it does, that's fine. If it doesn't, ask a question about how else you might do that. If the business benefits that you want aren't being met by the service that you're buying, obviously there's going to be an unhappy ending. If the reason you're buying it doesn't match with the way the vendor is doing business, there is a good chance that that also will lead to an unhappy ending. Okay, we've got a uh, just a set of uh, simple points. Check what you're being told. Lots of people can make statements that sound great, but check what you're being told. If you can, you may not have a choice, choose a properly accredited supplier. So why wouldn't you have a choice? Um, there are software companies that only sell their software through a hosted, so cloud, delivery model. Some of them are here today. If you want to use their software, you have no choice but to buy it from them on that model. You don't have to use their software. You could choose someone else, but it may be that's the right software to do it. If you're choosing on software, and it's only available from one supplier. Obviously, whether or not that supplier is accredited is irrelevant because that is your only choice. The other thing, which we all know, but we get caught out on, is you should be buying on overall value. Not price only, but overall value. What are the benefits in your business? And you can get some fantastic benefits when everything is hosted for you. Not only can you get rid of complex in-house IT, you can optimise your staff's time because you can make sure they do useful work rather than maintaining systems that someone else is looking after with the correct specialism for it. You get access anywhere so people can easily work from home. Our offices are in central London. Unfortunately, we quite often have travel disruptions. If we know that's going to happen, we just say, don't bother coming into the office. Everybody work from home. Everybody can access all of their systems including the telephone, exactly the same from home as they can from the office. Now it's still useful to be able to meet in the office because you get that exchange of ideas that you can't get when you're working from home, which is why we still have an office. But the ability to work anywhere is obviously a tangible benefit of the cloud. Our platform was originally conceived to allow accountants and clients to collaborate, to share the workload. That's a really useful benefit for a small business. They're getting specialist work, so they say, well, I can post the purchase invoices, but I don't really want to think anything about accruals and prepayments. Someone at the accountant's firm can do the accruals and prepayments and prepare management accounts, and then someone else, possibly a partner, can meet with the client to explain the value in the business. All possible because it's cloud. That's a tangible value. If you buy on price, I think it was um, Adam Smith, the famous economist, who said if you always buy the cheapest, you should set aside an additional amount for the risk that you run by buying something that's cheapest, in which case you could have afforded something that was a bit more expensive. 
That doesn't mean you should pay money just for the sake of paying money, obviously. But, you know, if you buy the cheapest, service is likely to have been cut out of the loop somewhere. Brand is really important if that brand encapsulates what it is you want to buy. Lots of people are loyal to a particular brand. So this car that I mentioned earlier, same manufacturer that I had my last car from. Brand loyalty was one of the factors, I'd had a good experience with the previous car, one of the factors that swayed my decision. So brand can be useful, but don't assume because it's from a particular brand, it will be what you want or it will be appropriate for your needs. And don't assume also that all the services that they offer are going to be offered with equal levels of competency. Companies generally are really good at certain things. A lot of people have seen all the hype around cloud and said, we'll do cloud. Can't be that difficult. But unless they have the expertise in that, you won't necessarily get the same levels of service that you do from other services that you get from them. And the other thing, and of course this is obvious, try and cut through all the buzzwords and the marketing hype that you get to work out what are the tangible benefits. If everybody's talking about cloud, or, or some particular feature, make sure you understand why that's important, not just um, picking up that as a term and buying it for that term. You know, that, that's obvious, but unfortunately, we all do it. I'm 20 minutes in. I did say I would try and keep it to 20 minutes. Um, I've got a little story I was going to tell you. Has anybody got any questions? Okay, so um, we've been going for a long time. We, we launched over a decade ago before anybody called it the cloud. And our whole, um, our whole vision was to build a collaboration platform that empowered people to work together. Now, we were, were a small company. Um, we were obviously then we were a lot smaller than we are now. Um, and we were at the vanguard of that technology breaking. And we've seen over the years lots and lots of people look at what we do and say, we can do that and try and copy it. Which is, you know, imitation, break form of flattery. What they don't necessarily realise is that underneath we've got, a, we've got a lot of technology that we've had to develop to make what we do look as easy as it is. But because they're not able to see that, then often we get people copying it. And we've had scenarios where we've had people uh, going into things like accounting web saying, I've bought this service, I'm getting a rubbish experience. And it, it's that idea that we had that obviously I would say this, so I put my hands up to that. That idea that we've had, that we've executed really well on, sometimes when it's been copied, hasn't been executed as well. So we've picked up a lot of people who've tried another service that's attempted to copy ours that hasn't done it successfully. And that's part of that problem that I said right at the beginning. You don't have to be credited, you don't have to be approved to run a cloud service. Anybody can start doing it. We've come across people, I, I've mentioned these people said, make sure they have a proper data center. We've come across people where this is, this is not really believable, so I hesitate to say it, but people where the guy is running a server in the airing cupboard of his house and charging people for access to it. Um, does it work? Yeah, most of the time. You know, I'm not sure how it copes with all the heat you get in the summer. Um, but be aware of what you're buying. There's nothing wrong with using that service if it delivers what you want. Make sure you know what you're buying. A lot of the key vendors in cloud, actually, they're, they're not technology vendors, they're not platform vendors, they're application vendors. That's fine. But understand when you deal with them, what you're buying isn't really cloud. You're buying an application that they have chosen to deliver using the cloud. There's a subtle difference there. Most vendors are choosing to deliver via the cloud for their benefit, not for yours. OK, 
Okay, so think about that. That doesn't mean it's not a good buy for you, but as I said earlier, think about what you want and why you want it, and then think about for the vendor, what is it that they're trying to sell you and why are they selling it? Is there a good tie up with that? Okay, my colleague is just coming round now. Um, we have a couple of resources uh, for you to take away. I'll explain what they are. Um, the first one with the searchlight, finding the cloud through the fog. This has had uh, a number of iterations. It's a jargon buster. It is unfortunately quite long. Okay, I apologize for that. But it goes through a lot of different terms that have been used over the years um, that encapsulate components of what we now call cloud computing. And it explains what that term means and uh, in addition to that, it talks about real-world applications, the kind of benefits and pitfalls that you have with that particular term, um, and how uh, that's shaped our journey towards understanding what we now know as the cloud. Um, the other one, thinking about the cloud, um, is a brochure that we've put together that talks about some of the cloud services we provide. The reason for including that, in the middle, um, it's got a a few years ago we did a, um, a kind of a tongue-in-cheek brochure about cloud cowboys and we pulled out some of the stuff in there that we've heard people say that sounds great but it's a bit like a lottery scratch card it sounds great you scratch it off and there's nothing underneath you know so one of my favorite ones is you know we use our, our data center is in a military bunker which sounds fantastic I've never done an information security risk assessment that deals with armed terrorists trying to make off with of the servers. However, flooding, particularly in Berkshire, where this particular data center happens to be located, is a real tangible risk. And do you want to stick your data underground in a flood zone? I would suggest probably not. But saying we use a military bunker sounds great. Get out your coin, scratch that scratch card, find out what's underneath. You know, it's the job of salesmen to sell. Caveat emptor, as we said before, make sure if you're contracting for cloud that what you're contracting for is what you want to buy. If it is, you'll have a great experience. Okay, can I, if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them now. Can I ask you, um, please to allow my colleague to scan your badge as you go out um, we'll be in to send you a thank you email for attending to the seminar we're not planning to follow anyone up other than to be able to send you an email and to advise you if we're doing other webinars and things like that online that would be really helpful to us i am available for any questions if anybody has them thank you very much for listening